Hello children in the present scenario of national crisis of corona virus we are going to begin our new session through e lessons it's rightly said where there is a will there is a way so in this national lockdown let's prove ourselves through your hard work and sincere effort let's start our bio portion with the fundamental unit of life that is fifth chapter of your ncert fundamental means basic unit in a big building brick is the smallest unit that is its fundamental unit likewise all living organisms that is plants and animals are also made up of small identical structures called cell as it's a big topic so i'm dividing this into three parts in the first part we will discuss discovery of cell size and shape of cells unicellular and multicellular organisms prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell structure of cells under this we will discuss cytoplasm nucleus and various organelles in the next video we will continue with cell organelles and their functions in the last part we are going to discuss some important questions and activities related to this topic first of all discovery of cell Robert Hooke discovered cell in 1665. He was observing a thin slice of cork with his crude and primitive microscope. He saw honeycomb-like structures and named this as cellula or cells. So for the first time it was agreed that all living organisms consist consisted of number of small structures or unit cell that is a fundamental unit of life all organisms are made up of cells cell is called structural and functional unit of life it's structural unit because the whole body is made up of cells functional unit means functions of organisms they are regulated by cells cell a latin word that means a little room there is a great diversity in shape and size of cells some cells they are round oval uh, irregular in shape some are very long it also depends upon their specific function for example nerve cell is very long because its function is to transmit messages from one part of the body to another some cells can change their shapes like amoeba white blood cells in the body smallest cell is pplo that is pleuronemonia like organisms mycoplasma largest cell is ostrich egg longest animal cell is nerve cell some organisms are made up of only one cells they are called unicellular organisms in the unicellular organisms all the functions of organisms are performed by the single cell only that is digestion respiration excretion etc they are performed by only one cell for example amoeba paramecium euglena organisms which are made up of many cells are called multicellular organisms for example all higher plants animals human beings are multicellular in the multicellular organisms there is division of labor here the question arises whether unicellular or multicellular is 
beneficial for the organism of course it's a multicellularity that has an extra advantage for the organism in the multicellular organism firstly there is division of labor as different cells they perform specific functions secondly in the unicellular organism death of a cell means death of an organism but in multicellular organisms death of a cell or few cell doesn't mean death of an organism rather some dead cells they play important roles in the multicellular organisms here the differences between unicellular and multicellular they are shown in a tabulated form here you can easily e differentiate between a unicellular and multicellular organism so what are the different components of cells a cell is a tiny mass of protoplasm which is surrounded by a membrane and it is capable of performing all functions of life a typical cell having three parts plasma membrane then nucleus for its control and cytoplasm having many organelles outermost delicate elastic membrane is known as plasma membrane or cell membrane or plasma lemma it is selectively permeable or semi permeable because it allows only certain molecules to pass through it it is made up of lipids proteins as well as some carbohydrates functions of cell membrane are it give shape to contents of the cell it act as mechanical barrier and checks the entry of microorganisms into the cell it helps in transport of materials into and out of the cell cell wall is rigid semi elastic semi transparent and protected with covering outside the plasma membrane in plant cells fungi and prokaryotes its composition varies in plants fungi and prokaryotes sometimes extra deposition of some materials like lignin suberin present on the cell wall to add thickening to it cell wall it performs many functions and give shape to the cell give hardness and rigidity to the cell and help in providing protection to inner parts the very important cell organelle that is nucleus it's also called the brain of the cell usually it is in the central position but in plant cells it lies towards periphery in prokaryotes nuclear membrane is absent instead the central region where hereditary material is present is called nucleoid some cells like rbcs sieve elements they lack nucleus cells without nucleus cannot survive for long time usually cells contain only single nucleus but some cells they are multinucleate also component of nucleus are outermost nuclear envelope that is made up of double membrane covering and it separates the nucleus from cytoplasm nuclear envelope has nuclear pores in between that help in the exchange of material between cytoplasm and nucleus then inside nucleoplasm that is a colorless dense sap is present then one or two prominent bodies called nucleolus 
is present in the nucleus. Thread-like hereditary material called chromosomes are present in the nucleus. Nucleus is control center of the cell. It controls cell metabolism and cell activities. Another very important role of the nucleus is it contains all genetic information and help in transfer of characters from parents to offsprings. Division of nucleus is essential for cell division. All the contents of a cell except for the nucleus are called cytoplasm. Cytoplasm has two parts, cytosol and cell organelles. Fluid part of the cytoplasm is called cytosol and specific membrane bound structures are called cell organelles. Organelle means tiny organs. These perform specific functions but in prokaryotes these membrane bound organelles are absent. Depending upon the complexity of the cell, internal structure of the cell, we can categorize the cell as prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Pro means primitive, karyot means nucleus. Similarly, u means true and karyon means nucleus. The basic difference between a prokaryote and eukaryote is the difference of well-organized nucleus. Well-organized nucleus is absent in prokaryote, but in eukaryotes, well-organized nucleus surrounded by nuclear membrane is present. Membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria, plastids, they are absent in prokaryotes, but membrane-bound organelles are present in eukaryotes. When membrane-bound organelles are absent in prokaryotes, it doesn't mean that prokaryotes cannot perform all functions. Prokaryotes can do different functions like respiration, etc. even when mitochondria is absent. Because enzymes required for these processes are present. Typical vacuoles, they are also absent in prokaryotes which are present in eukaryotes. Examples of prokaryotes are bacteria and all higher plants, animals, fungi are eukaryotes. Thank you. And we will continue organelle and their functions in our next video.